Now, when you're dealing with complicated negative fractional indices, there's a lot to do. So here's some basic steps that will help you work your way through. It's not essential to do them in this order, but it just usually works out easier. First, start by simplifying the negative indices. Now, you can do that by taking the reciprocal of the whole expression, and you change the sign of the index when you do that. Now, special note here, we're not flipping the actual fractional index number here, like the m over m. We're not flipping that upside down. We are flipping the entire expression. So we're taking this reciprocal of the whole expression. So if you've got a fraction as your base, or it might not be a fraction, it might just be a number, but any number can be written as a fraction because it's itself over one. And you're raising it to a negative fraction that has something other than one for the numerator and the denominator. Then to get rid of this little negative that's up here, you can rewrite the expression with the actual base flipped upside down. You've taken the reciprocal of it, but notice that the index expression, the, sorry, the, the actual index or the exponent is still exactly the same, except it's changed its sign. It hasn't flipped upside down. Now, if you want to see why this happens so you can understand, think of this original expression we had here. To get rid of the negative, we've learned that what we can do is we can, we can take all of that, bring it over here, and say that's equal to 1 over a over b all to the power of m over n. And see how I've got rid of the negative that, in that step? Now, we know that uh, if we're raising a fraction, let's say just a over b, just to the power of, let's just pretend we're just to the power of one thing. We know that's the same as raising the top and raising the bottom separately, don't we? So if we've got a complicated thing like m over n, it's exactly the same as a to the power of m over n over b to the power of m over n, okay? Now, if we've done one divided by that, what we've really got is one divided by, I've just rewritten this as a great big divide by sign, and now I can rewrite this expression as I've written it up here, just splitting it up to show you what happens. We've got a to the power of m over n over b to the power of m over n. Now instead of dividing, I'm going to keep on moving along this way. I've not worked down, but I don't have enough board space. I'm going to multiply instead of divide, and I'm going to find the multiplicative inverse of this, or the reciprocal, by flipping it upside down. So that gives me the b to the power of m over n on the top, and the a to the power of m over n on the bottom. Now, did I need to break these up? Strictly no, but it's just an easier way for you to understand why the m over, the, over n stays up the right way, even when we've flipped the expression. Because really, we just take the whole denominator and the whole numerator and we swap them over. And that is part of the numerator and part of the denominator to have that index expression up that way. So what we get here, then, is basically one lot of all of this, so we, we just have this. And if we like, we can go back to simplify it. We can say, hey, if they're both raised to the same power, we can put one over the other and, and then raise them. So it makes it a lot simpler to just write b over a, all to the power of m over n, which is what we had back here. So we can see that it works. Now, this is a handy little trick, but just make sure that when you do it, what you're flipping upside down, or finding the reciprocal of, is the entire expression, which is based on the base. We're not flipping the index number. Now, once you've done that, next simplify the denominators of indices. So that's the n part. Take care of that. You can use thirds if necessary. And then what you should be left with is just positive indices, because you've got rid of the negatives and you've got rid of the fractions, so you should have something just to the power of two or three or four or some other number. And you should be able to then take care of that last. So here we have an example where we need to do all of those things. Let's start by getting rid of the negative up there by taking the reciprocal of the whole expression. So that means I'm going to get 9 over 4 instead of 4 over 9. But it's going to be now raised to the power that is exactly the same except no negative there anymore. So I've adjusted for that. Next, I want to take care of the 2 part of this expression. Now I know that raising something to the power of a half is the same as finding the square root of it. So I could do this in my head, but just to show you, what I'm basically finding then is the square root of 9, and I'm finding the square root of 4. And I'm raising the whole thing then still to the power of 3, because I haven't done that yet. I'm just doing the half part. Now, if you prefer to write it as this part as one big square root, like that, that's exactly the same thing. I was just moving a step ahead. Or if you prefer to think, well, actually, no, the square root of 
9 off the top of my head and I could jump straight to writing down a 3 and writing down a 2, then that's okay too. But never be afraid of writing down your working in each step as you simplify these things because it just helps to avoid making mistakes. Now the last thing to do is we can cube the 3 and we can cube the 2 separately and that's our answer and we're finished. Now you can see that this is an easier way to do this question. It's not absolutely essential you do it in this order, but if you do, we have nice simple numbers that you can really quickly and easily do in your head. Of course, at this point, if we come over here, we'll choose a different colour. If we had decided instead to raise the 9 and the 4 to the power of 3 first, then we would have ended up with, what, 729 on the top, because that's 9 cubed. And on the bottom we'd have 4 cubed, which is 64, and we'd have all of that still raised to the power of a half. So in that way we, we would have taken care of the 3 first, and still the half is to go. Now to find the square root of these numbers, your calculator will sort it out for you. And sure enough, the square root of 729 is 27, and the square root of 64 is 8. I can do that one in my head, but these are sort of nastier numbers to deal with. Putting it into your calculator, you'll get the exact same thing, but remember in a lot of our index expressions that we're going to be working with, we're going to be working with x's or y's or a's or b's and not necessarily the things we can put in the calculator. So keeping what we can nice and simple just helps, um, helps avoid mistakes and it helps keep it nice and, and logical in your, own, in your own mind.